Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. As we'll see there, the US 30 has recovered slightly, bouncing off the potential um, support around about 16.738, but it's still got a long way to go before it begins to uh, re-challenge the potential resistance at 69.71. Technicals are um, slightly neutral on the MACD and the uh, RSI, but so stochastic they are still showing slightly negative. So we have bounced off that 21 period SMA in the short term. Uh, I can see some markets, the Germany 30 and the US 30 is spiking up slightly this morning as rel in relative terms, obviously, you can't really see it too much on the candlestick right there, but we are seeing a little bit more signs of life in the equity markets after uh, a bit of a pause uh, because of all the current fundamentals. So the UK 100 is actually still below potential uh, resistance. I think this is what's capping the UK 100 right now at 67.74, uh, though we are looking like we're building up a little piece of consolidation around about that 55 period SMA round about uh, 67.51 um, we need to get a close above 67.74 to be able to get a retest again of 68.74 should things calm down but everything going on with uh, Ukraine and um, Iraq right now there's a lot of fundamentals in play right now which can uh, really put the lid on any ca or kind of cap in the equity growth that we see in the short term so the Japan 225 is still bouncing around uh, 49.77 uh, there's not really too much to report to this in the very short term. Dollar yen has been uh, has been up one minute down the next, so it's not giving a lot of direction, and that's what I think is kind of um, kind of holding back Japan 25 as well. Matter of fact, looking at the uh, dollar yen FX pair, um, we are capped at that 21 period SMA. Uh, the next potential support is at 101 spot 35. Might be getting a death cross there on the moving averages. It's not happened as of yet, uh, but it does look to be a little bit of pressure on dollar yen. Maybe we are beginning to get a little bit more uh, yen buying as a safe haven, um, but gold is probably where you, you have been seeing more of the action. There has been a little bit of a sell off on there as of yesterday, actually. So looking at crude West Texas, it's come off its highs. Uh, it did go almost as high as a 107 spot 77, uh, slowly dipping down to doji formations there yesterday, uh, as you know, pretty much things aren't escalating out of control in Iraq right now. Though in Ukraine, obviously, the Russians did turn off the gas. As uh, so Gazprom no longer supplying gas there, that's ratcheting up the pressure there slightly. Um, but if the Americans start dropping bombs or things start getting a lot more um, aggravated over in, in Iraq, and already is pretty aggravated over there right now, but things begin to escalate further, um, then there could be uh, further upside for gold. But right now, you have to be realistic. You're in the middle of two ranges right now. Could drop all the way back down to 105. Could go all the way up to 110. Uh, it really depends. So slap bang in the middle of those ranges is quite tough. So with gold right now. Uh, actually had a very strong sell-off yesterday. It pretty much touched the tip of this uh, 55 period SMA. Sold off quite aggressively, uh, though we've stopped uh, pretty much bang on that potential support at 1267. Now this will be strategic. This is also the 21 period SMA. Uh, with everything that's happening, all the fundamentals out there, um, this could just be a little bit of a pullback before we begin, begin to get a move to the upside. If it is a start of something uh, more aggressive, you know, there is obviously a lot more downside all the way back down to 1240 again uh, if, it, if, if it doesn't recover. So do bear that in mind. So 1267 is a level to watch on gold. So looking at euro dollar, it's not really done much. Either has cable overnight, um, but uh, I guess, sorry, yesterday we actually did manage to rally back up to one spot 3568. We've stopped dead in the tracks there as well. This level looks to be the one to look at today. One spot 3568, uh, and it's bounced off there quite a number of times the last couple of sessions. So we'll get a chance if it breaks up any higher. And with cable, we do actually have finally CPI and, re and RPI today at 9.30 UK time. So this, if you're watching this in the morning UK time, that might be worth having a look at. It does look to be that 170 is a pretty staunch resistance. It's tried three, uh, two days to break and close above it. It's failed to do so. I think we got, got up to about 170.11 uh, yesterday. Uh, failure to break through again there today. And um, that just gives you a bit of a flavor about where we are. Uh, but that, that uh, CPI and RPI data could be either the catalyst from higher or it could result in a bit of a sell-off if it comes out weaker than expected. A really good number would add extra credence to uh, an early rate hike uh, at the end of 2014. So um, economic data-wise, obviously we've already covered the main stuff in the morning. We've got the ZDW business report in Germany at 10 followed by uh, the US uh, CPI numbers at 130. So there actually seems to be a fair amount of economic data uh, due today. 
And uh, if we actually look forward onto tomorrow, uh, we've actually got the Bank of England minutes, uh, and you've also got petroleum data sales, uh, and most importantly, you do have the Federal Reserve Monetary Policy meeting uh, tomorrow, which will give more of an indication if we're going to continue to taper um, their stimulus program, which they are expected to do. So people will be looking at that uh, with keen eyes. Keep your eye on the chart form as ever. Make sure you make insights part of your layout, and uh, join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.